welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got a cool episode, I think, today, where we're going to introduce you to a new type of puzzle. I was contacted a, a few weeks ago by email um, by Atanas Georgiev, who runs um, a series of puzzle sites on which you can sort of play interactive uh, puzzles like Star Battle or Slitherlink, and he'd come up with a new idea uh, for a puzzle altogether, and it's, it's on the screen here. It's called Stitches. Um, and he asked me to, to test a puzzle, and I have to say I was very impressed with it. I thought it was great. Um, so uh, I've waited until his website is sort of ready to go, and you guys can go go there. I'll put a link in the chat, and you can um, you can go and play these puzzles if you enjoy them. Um, uh, but I'm going to sort of showcase this this puzzle now, so you guys can can see what you think. Um, so it's, as, as with all good puzzles, it's got fairly simple rules. Um, you can see the grid is divided into areas, and the idea is to connect um, each area to all its neighboring areas with a single stitch. So you can see that that is what the answer has done here. If we look, for example, at um, this sort of reverse L shape at the bottom, that sees exactly two other areas. It's connected to this area on the left and this area here and therefore there must be a single stitch connecting um, uh, this area to each of those areas and you can see that that gives quite a lot of flexibility in terms of how this stitch could be made but, you know if you decide that there must be a, a hole in this square the stitch could go left or vertically um, and what we have to use is these numbers around the grid, which tell us the number of holes in each row and column, to sort of disambiguate how the stitches must run. And that's all there is to it. Um, you can't use uh, uh, a hole for more than one stitch, um, and the stitches can only run orthogonally. Um, and apart from that, that's all we know. So I'm going to show you the puzzle that... Um, uh, was Atanis created for us, which is a branded puzzle. I quite approve of that. Look at that. There's a C here and a C here, cracking the cryptic. Um, and I'm going to take a look at this in a minute. Now, I did do this a few weeks ago, uh, but my memory is such that I do so many puzzles that it sort of trains itself to forget the puzzle I last did almost immediately. So, uh, as Mark will testify, um, my ability to remember puzzles that I've done before isn't the best, and so this will be all but a live solve. Um, now, just a piece of admin as well, I mentioned it yesterday, but uh, I think tomorrow we are going to see the launch of our classic Sudoku app. So this is the, the follow-up to our sandwich Sudoku app, um, a classic Sudoku, so it's just um, normal Sudokus, but it really is um, a collection of Sudokus we're very, very proud of. Um, and um, yeah, you might want to look out for that. Um, I'll certainly announce it again tomorrow, but you should be able to find it tomorrow available on Android App Store and indeed on Steam uh, for PC or Mac. So, um, yeah, we're, we're excited about that one. So, how do you do a Stitches puzzle? Um, right, well, I've got my first tip is that I look in the grid and I try and find cells that cannot connect to other areas. So, if I look in this top row, those squares, and indeed that one, they simply don't connect to any other areas, so they cannot contain holes. Um, that square can't connect to another. That square can't connect to another area. These three can't connect to other areas. Um, there may be other squares as well, but that's what I, that's what I start doing. I try and find those, those points. And now the next thing I try and look for is areas that only connect to to another area through a single position. So this column is a very likely candidate because we can ask where does this shape here connect to this bottom area? And you can see there's just one join and that's here. So we know there must be a stitch crossing this boundary. Now I'm going to use red to indicate stitches and I'm going to use eight to indicate holes. Um, now again ideally, uh, and you can do this in, um, in Atanas's uh, interactive software, 
I would quite like to be able to mark the boundaries like these bound you know let's say I concluded by logic that there couldn't be a stitch across this boundary I'd quite like to mark this this wall oh you know in another color or with an X or something um, now we can't do that in our software so we're gonna have to improvise today um, but um, yeah say la vie that is what we shall do um, now where shall we look next are there other yes look at this area here and this area only connects to the C through one position so again we know because each area it must connect to all its connected areas that must be a stitch and now we can do the same trick here with this area and this area look it can only connect through one position so I'll make this one blue uh, that's got to be true now this look at this L here how many different areas does this L see well it sees a C it sees this area and it touches that area as well so in fact every single cell here must contain a hole and this L only attaches to this bottom area through one position so that must be a stitch that must be a hole um, now this one must connect to this area and, I, and this is where it starts to get complicated we don't know whether it goes up across or down but we do know it connects to this area so we know this hole here cannot come rightwards it must go up or left and we can't yet use the numbers we don't know enough to know which of those it does Ah, ah, yeah, but look, this C, and this is, I find this quite hard with this puzzle because you have to, you have, your, your scanning works differently, but it wasn't immediately obvious to me that this C only connects to this area through one position, but it does, look, only connects through this square, these two squares, so that must be a stitch. It doesn't tell us yet which way this goes and it doesn't tell us which way that goes, but um, ah, now we can do some logic on the top row. We need six holes in the top row. Now, the interesting thing here to note is that these two squares only connect to one other area, i.e. this one. So it's not possible for both of these squares to have a hole in them. Um, therefore, one hole here two here that's three so these three squares must all contain holes and now this square and this square only they they can only connect to each other that's the only option this square can only connect to this area here that makes that an eight now this square cannot be connected to anything and neither can this square look because this area here has been connected already to this area through this stitch. So that square, which only sees this area, is also green. Uh, now this square, because we've got a two clue here, it cannot, uh, cannot go this way, because combined with that hole, that will give three holes in the row. So that square is not in. This square, this square could come vertically downwards so ah now in fact we can go further than that we can go a lot further than that how does this area connect to this C now quickly we're able to see it only touches the C in two positions so one there must be a stitch either here or here now whichever one of those is true there is going to be a hole in one of these two positions and that will be our second hole in row two so all those squares must be green and now look this five at the bottom we've already got one two three four holes so if i try and put 
a hole here to connect downwards, that will create six holes in the column. So in fact, this is not in. This must be the stitch. Uh, this square can't be can't connect to another region because it cannot turn right now. So that's not in. It's a cool puzzle, isn't it? I really do. I really do like it. I think it's got a lot going for it. Um, and I, I tell you what, I'm lost in admiration for someone who could come up with this puzzle. I mean, it's very, very clever. Uh, this square can't connect to another square. And now we're starting to get a real restriction along this row look because we've got, this is a 10 by 10 grid and we've already got two green squares. So there can only be one more green square in this row. Ah, yes, I see. Now look, these two squares here only connect to this area. So it's not possible for them both to contain a hole. So there is one hole in these two squares. That means there must be holes in every other position in this row in order to get to seven. And in, now we can see how this is going to work because if this is connected, well, it must be connected to another area so it can only go that way. So that square becomes green. This is a stitch, that red. This is a stitch and it can only come downwards. This is a stitch and can only come downwards. That this ambiguates which way that one goes. I'm going to have to use a third color for that one. And ah, now we've got five holes in column three, so those must all be green. We've got three holes in. So whichever one of these stitches works is going to complete column one. That's going to give us a fourth hole in column two. So, ah, yes, yeah, so this must be in. We, we must connect this upwards because we need six holes in column two. And because this square can't be in, the only stitch that's possible in any of those four positions is a left-hand stitch. So it would have to come like that. But that only gives me one hole. So these two must both be connected. Ah, and that's good. That gives me, look, that completes this row, whatever row number that is. Row number eight, I guess. Um, Okay, so now we're going to reach an impasse again. I'm going to have to figure out something else. Ah, these two columns are filled. Look, we've got ones at the bottom and we've got the stitch up there. So the C to connect to this area so there must be a stitch in one of these two squares or one of these four squares or two of these four squares <laughs> no a stitch in yeah two of the four squares um, not sure how we tell which is which there actually look this five is very restricted as well yes this square, if it's not in, this square is also not in. Um, and that would mean there would only be four squares left. So this square is in and it must go vertically. That gives us uh, three holes in that row look. So that's finished off. So, ah, now this is interesting, this square Obviously it could go this way, but it would then repeat. That would be two stitches connecting this area to this area. So that is not in. That square cannot see another area. I'm going to focus that green. Therefore, these two squares are in. Now we've got, ah yeah, now we've got five 
holes in this column, column four. So these two squares must be green and this stitch must come horizontally. I'll get to use purple for that. Um, now, ah, yeah, now look, we've got four, four clue here. So this cannot be the horizontal stitch in this row, otherwise we'd get five holes. We've got four hole, holes already in this column, so they're both green. Oh, and now we've got a six clue here, and I've only got six uh, white squares. So that must be a stitch which completes everything on the left hand side of the grid. These are all in. So now what we've got to do is work out how these stitches flow. Now, ah, that's easier said than done. <laughs> that is easier said than done because this one can go upwards or across. This one can go left or right and this one can go left or up. Right, okay, but we've got Also got the two here. Ah, but this, hang on a minute, as that square, oh, it has already, con yeah, this area here is already connected to, to this area through this stitch look. So this cannot go vertically. So it must go horizontally because it can't go downwards. Whoa. Okay. Now that this square cannot go left now and must go vertically. So that makes that a stitch. That completes this row. Now this area has been connected to this area, the C. So this cannot be a stitch, this square must be green, and this must be a connection. Now let's just check. That's correct, isn't it? Because the C hasn't yet connected to this area at the bottom. So that is another stitch. And now we've got, uh, now this must be in, because we need six uh, holes in this, and therefore that must be in. So this is our final connection, I think. That gives five here, five here. Now we have to just stare at this and see if it looks correct. This wasn't already connected to that, yep. So that looks good. I think this is correct. Now, a quick word of warning. If you click on check here, it will say it's wrong because our checker is looking at whether this is forming a valid Sudoku pattern which it's not, there are no ones, two, threes, fours, five, six, sevens, or nines in the grid, let alone uh, each appearing once in each row, column, and three by three box. So don't worry about that, just see whether you get a pattern that looks approximately like mine. If you do, you have solved the puzzle correctly. Do let me know in the comments what you thought of this puzzle. I think it's a really, really nice innovation. And as I say, um, I'll link uh, some more of these puzzles in the chat for you guys if you do enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.